comes to EVE Online, every player wants to know the most effective tactic available. You want to know the meta. The meta controls everything. It determines what will and will not happen. Knowing the meta will alter your views, make you question your reality. It might even make you laugh. And now, you're part of it. You're watching The Meta Show. Hi, everybody. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Hi everybody, we are here. I am joined by Major Sniper from Ascendance and Sapedes from Sigma Gr Ah fuck me. Sigma Grindset. There's a good start. Um and we're gonna talk what it takes for run groups in Eve. Uh because there's a lot of focus on PvP and such. Um and not much focus on uh yeah, you know, what keeps the Wheels turning, and yes, I decided to look smart. I am wearing my red tie, uh, in honor of a good friend of mine, Major. You may recognize this tie. Um, um, and I thought I'd look smart. Uh, but first of all, um, some of you may be wondering, Brisk isn't here. Well, um, it turns out, uh, he decided to go wandering on the uh, Imperial Palace and um, seems to have gotten himself lost. So we have a missing person poster. Um, he was last seen March 30th in front of the Imperial Palace. Um, if you see him, he could be very confused, uh, very lost, and we would love to get him back. So um, please forward any information you may have to the first Imperial Palace, um, to the INM Public Affairs Department, um, because we'd love to bring Brisk home. You know, you, you got to help the elderly out. So I'm going to leave that up on the screen, and um, when I can find the right one here. And yeah. So, uh, we are here to talk groups in EVE. Um, how about you guys introduce yourself? Who wants to go first? You go first. My name is Major Sniper. Um, I run Ascendants, or apparently I do, and yeah, that's who I am, Major Snap. Speedies! Is he bad? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, oh. uh, my name is uh, Speedies, and I run Sigma Grindset in the corporation Sensible People, and we've been a part of Imperium for quite a little while now, and come from uh, long roots of low sec and all kinds of stuff like that. Sweet. So, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You look, yeah. Uh, I've had a long day at work today, guys, so this, this could be quite a chuckle factor of the uh, <laughs> stream here. Um, so, first of all, that, that's, let's go into um, how long you guys have each been, you know, Doing what you do. So who wants to go first on that? Go and see this. Yeah, so I've been I've been playing Eve for since the beginning. Um I quit in 2012 and didn't come back till game till 2018. And when I came back to game, uh, the intensity kind of changed. I think it was like 2018 when it was a uh, Workwell Fest, you know, everybody was doing super super umbrellas and so much as yeah, i think about four years now everything's drastically changed um from running a corp to an alliance so the game is completely different from even four years ago to where it was you know 10 15 years ago but i've i've, I've been enjoying it i'm a little upset with ccp's vanguard but you know i'll take it i hope they uh patch for Nullsec comes before summer, but we can all cross our uh, hands and feet. Mm. That's for sure. Mm. Well, from uh, my perspective, um, 
I've uh, sort of been playing from 2007. I started in my real life bosses corp and decided that wasn't enough for me. So got sort of playing on my own. Um, pretty much reached the apex around 2015 when one day in a South African corp, this guy by the name of Uncle Pilot, some of the new guys might, some of the older guys might know him, um, came into a South African channel and asked who would be interested in helping him start a corp. And um, I was the only, I think it was just me and one other guy there. And I was like, like you know, yeah, his goons so fucking desperate that they've now sent, that they've now sent sent people out to come and raid like little channels looking for people to join. And anyway, after a little bit of conversation, I decided I'd jump in and help him. And that was where Ascendance started in 2016. Um, pretty much being the most hated corp in the most hated alliance was something very special for the first couple of years. Uh, it took a fucking thick skin, excuse me, I'm so, don't, I'm allowed to swear, but it took a pretty thick skin to um, to run the corporation in the beginning. Um, so, yeah, and uh, slowly but surely, we've built it up to where it is now. Okay. Um, so, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a lot of challenges to running an alliance or a corp, um, especially when... Yeah, there's a lot of people you have to manage, which, on that note, Sir Peters, how many people are in Sigma Grind Seven? Um, we're sitting roughly around 700 plus human beings in Sigma Grind Set. It's a, it's a lot of people. Not bad. <laughs> um, do you know the answer for Ascendance? Because I do. <laughs> what, the numbers for Ascendance? Yeah, real people. Uh oh, probably in the just over the four hundred mark, four five hundred. Give and take five hundred and thirty something. There we go. We've had a um, we've had a good we've had a good uh, delta for the past mm, couple of months now, like month and a half. Um, you know, we as any large corp would or should, um, we purge a lot of inactive members to sort of keep our our numbers more or less active. Um, as to who is active in the game. It's not always true, but um, uh, we do purge a fair amount of people. So, um, Sapedes, what are... Because, you know, neither of us here, other than you, run an alliance. What are some of the challenges you kind of... You know, what does it take to run an alliance? Well, I think... It, so, a big part of Sigma came from... Dread bomb days, um, and we had a difference in kind of where we wanted to go as a, a people, right? Um, part of Dread bomb wanted to go to Cloud Ring and do contracts and stuff like that. They ended up folding into Big Ab, and we decided we wanted more of the null sec hybrid type environment. Like our idea of PvP was a little different. We wanted more st stability, right, for our people in both you know, what we call positive feedback looping. So like uh, PVE to make money so we can PVP more. Um, and being based in low sec or mercenary contracts and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's very, it can be very lucrative, but on an individual basis, it requires, you know, someone plexing or having some sort of extracurricular activity to make themselves ISK that's not related to the, you know, the entity that's doing contracting and low sex. So it's, it's hard to get people to do that, become super self de reliant to make money on their own and then ask them to spend an exorbitant amount of it engaging in those, those contracts. So it was just something the majority of my people didn't want to do and myself didn't want to do. We wanted to go for another Avenue and we found solace and friendship and, and, and peers in the Imperium. And we've, really enjoyed it ever since we uh, came over. Yeah, for, for I, I will say from my experience when FCing, um, for a smaller alliance, you guys do pretty much bring it when it comes to PvP. Um, yeah, we, uh, we love PvP any any day of the week. Let's go. We love brawling. 
So a good example is actually something I was going to use at the end here to smug against Horde. But um, the F4R fight the other day, where yet again they failed to destroy one of our Fortazars. Shocker. Um, you guys actually brought, you know, for, for your side, a sizable amount of people um, uh, along to that, um, which was actually able to hold its own quite well. Yeah, we've, we, we've been really busy this week, and so we got a last-minute ping, and we're like, okay, let's go. And uh, just with move ops and everything else going on, I was I was happy with the small fleet we brought that day compared to, you know, the, I think this last few weeks we've been inundated with 100, 200-man fleets, and people were just so tired. So I was happy with what we brought to that fight. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty good. I was quite surprised with that fight because essentially... We, we smashed them in the face, which was quite impressive. We, at the start of that, we were all a bit like, mm, is this going to work? Um, but no, they got their ass kicked quite badly. Um, yeah, the, the the last minute hustle for the uh, the pings that Horde have been doing, yes. I, I was surprised that we were, mustered the forces rapidly and just destroyed them on grid. Everybody did really well. Yeah, so... Um, Major, a little bit about um, same sort of thing. What what are the like the the struggles and what um, you and my struggle, Dave? <laughs> I could make it. Yeah, less. I, I just no. I'm, I'm just kidding with you, mate. Listen, I was just thinking now while 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 listening to um, <sighs> while listening to Sir Peter's talk um, that yeah, I I really. I really think that like huge kudos must be sent out to these guys that are running smaller corps and alliances, because to a degree, there's a certain level of laziness um, being in large alliances where you have multiple, multiple content um, bringers, if you want to call it that, being the FCs. Um, everybody hates you, therefore everybody wants to fight you. That sort of brings a, a ton of, of milk to the yard as well. Which is really cool, but with the smaller guys, they they have to um, not only be good enough to maintain and keep their smaller FCs and other groups, um, but uh, they need to carry on maintaining sufficient content, both PVE and PVP wise, for their members. You know, this is a lot more focused. It's a lot more. It's a hell of a lot more effort for them to 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 uh, to put it in. So, a big big kudos to all of them. Mm. Hardships for me running a corp uh, are dealing with things like um, I mean the biggest hardship, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna drive the nail home here is Zed's dead. That for me has been the biggest hardship in this game, um, and scenarios around that really really dig home a bit. Um, but we all know that Eve Online is a very very um, social game. Um, there's a lot of highly sociable people in our corporation. Um, and, you know, when, when you get involved and you start talking to them, it's, it's always an amazing time. So I don't really have necessarily hardships. I guess my hardship would be that I don't necessarily always get enough time to spend with the guys as much as I'd like to. Um, but, um, you know, we've got such an amazing team, both leadership and line member that you know it doesn't matter who you are you can log in at any time and uh, just jump straight into into a, a conversation for the most times obviously it's not always like that like every game not everybody's online all the time blah 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 but uh yeah my hardships that 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 one was the biggest one yeah that um just on that note before we go on to the next topic i think that was the first time our corpse ever actually had to deal with that um, and it was quite a large one, so that was definitely... That, that, for me, was the third time I've had to deal with something like that, but the first two never went through. So, yeah, it's some... I mean, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist. Um, you know, I, it's, it's difficult when people reach out with serious mental issues where it's beyond just having a conversation... Um, you know, that's that for me is really, really hard. 
I just want to say while we have 158 people viewing that, like any mental issues that you guys may have or feel that you may have, go and get it checked out. Go and speak to a psychiatrist, a psychologist. Um, vent yourself, let let yourself free, and and if they medicate you, take your medication because it works. It works really well. I'm a huge supporter of me mental health, and I think that one of the worst things is that is that it doesn't go it doesn't go checked, and that's the worst thing people can do for themselves. So I just wanted to take that moment to say that. Uh, bear with me while I unscrew my microphone, which should now be unscrewed. It's because I was leaning back in my chair, guys. Um, so yeah that that was a tricky one um but mo moving on a bit um so we'll, we'll go with sapedes first how, how has it changed over the years because there's a lot of changes in eve um and we always look at how the metas change for pvp and how fighting changes and so on whatever but we, we never look at the 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 bit that keeps the game going because at the end of the day the fights are cool the you know holding your space is cool but without the alliances and the corporations quite frankly without ascendance i wouldn't be playing now um so yeah how has that um evolved over the the, the years of these i think i think one of the biggest kind of things with the game right now is like it, it was easier to find content and really kind of drive an idea with doctrine or like how you fight how you engage people like any sort of environment in eve and i've noticed it's 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 become more difficult to get um content randomly like it's it's become really hard to force and engage with people and that's kind of one of the driving factors in the null sec or low sec or any of these alliances is is something to feed your people um and i've noticed with a lot of the mechanic changes over the last four years we've seen a, a huge decline in capital uh hunting like there i think at one point we were like hundreds and hundreds of work roles and carriers were getting killed a month you could just take a hole and boom, you find a carry, you find something to kill, you can anchor a fort in somebody's space, start a fight. You can't do that anymore because the time zone manipulation that people are doing right now is really unfortunate. Um, but yeah, just random content um, with the ESSs have, have really created a safe place for people to disengage from content. Like if you guys remember a decade or, or even five years ago before ESSs and all this stuff, people got trapped in pipe systems and they either had to go, okay, guys, we're going to go out in a blaze of glory. And, you know, that's it because there's no way to get safe to the needle jack and any vac space. So just kind of random day-to-day -day activities where you're taking roam out has become more and more difficult to engage with people. Um, because they have too many um, mechanics to evac from content. So that's a frustrating bit for my guys, which enjoy home defense when we're not doing operations to really, you know, keep the people well fed with, with entertainment, so to speak, because that's what we do. We're PvP. We play a null and there's nothing to fucking kill right now. Yeah, I, I do remember the days when, like, people would come to Dalv and rather than running and hiding in an ESS, yeah, you'd catch them on a gate, admittedly sometimes they'd yeah, see 100%. a bright light and then it's goodbye. But, um, yeah, well, other, other times you'd, you'd actually get a fight. Um, but, yeah, the, the I mean, I like taking a filament. It gets you to easy content. But at the same time, the whole... It reduces a lot of skill, the whole getting your fleet back out of hostile space. Um, you know, get, working out how to get somewhere. Um, you know, bringing more than 25 dudes everywhere. It's, you know, and then there's the ESS where people just run away to it. Can't You can follow, but, you know, at your own... It's ludicrous, they're just going to go into the ESS and you can't necessarily follow them in that. Yeah, it becomes a yeah me a mechanical fight. You know, if are they zero transversal, super like a hundred km range, 
like how are you going to apply to that with all the nerfs to the the cruisers and stuff you're going to have to implement you know a long range battle cruiser or even just bring battleships that can apply to something that far off so then you have you're forced to escalate higher than they are able to so like they just disengage and leave because there's no way to apply to them with you know plus 100 km with without using battleships or having doctrines that are obscenely fast and expensive and that's a whole nother thing with the mechanic industries the, the industry mechanics that are going on right now make pirate ships just insanely expensive so you can't have fun with them yeah, I want to well. echo one of the um, guys who made a comment, Malthazaron. Filaments is killing the game. I couldn't agree with that anymore, and that is pretty much exactly as it is. I think those filaments, like uh, Sir PD said, um, you know, guys can just now ultimately, if they feel like they're overpowered or whatever, they can just filament out. That is so much, that's so garbage. That is so chicken sherbet that, um, no, nah, I think they should get rid of them as well. The ESES things I don't mind so much because it, it sort of also gives an opportunity for you to get a small group together and go and possibly defend all the multi-million. So it sort of goes both ways with that one. But the whole filamenting thing, being able to, it's nice to be able to filament into somewhere. But I mean, I don't know. I don't know how they can do it. But filamenting out is just wrong. Right? Yeah, they should but... make it like you need to travel five jumps before you can filament out again. You can't jump the, within five jumps, just as an example. The ESS brings some interesting mechanics to everything, really. Um, like, you can't, like, Sino there. Um, if you put a bubble on it, you'll land at zero and can't take the gate all the time, no matter where you walk to. So it adds some interesting mechanics, but... And also the fact that you're putting this on the line. But, yeah, the filaments, they... Um, yeah, you just get your fleet to warp off safe up and then filament out. Or, in the case of some horde fcs filament yourself out and leave your fleet behind yeah no <laughs> oh, god me oh uh, well, it's because i'm leaning back sorry hold on let me adjust my mic give me a sec there we go okay so now it's in my face i'm so good at this guys there we go okay right um yeah that in my opinion there's also like issues like um scarcity caused a uh, a, a large issue with running corps and alliances, I think, because well, scarcity and the the changes to resist and the changes to sites made it more difficult for corps and alliances to make isk passively, you know, um, which then fuel PvP because you gotta have isk. Um, also made it a lot harder to replace the ships. So back in the day, you, you would see people doing like 100-man capital zones, and that would always be a good fight. But now you you just you know, don't see that because it's ludicrously expensive, which in a way I mean, is look, good. Look at how, how much it cost us sort of a year or two ago to replace a carrier. I mean, it was like 800 million for a carrier hull. Now, like, they're sort of four, four and a half, depending how they fit. And, um, you know, and it's the same thing with raw calls, you know, when raw calls first came out. And, oh, my goodness, we were we were mining Titans every other week. Like, it was just ridiculous how fast that we were able. But then all those nerfs came along and everything. And now, who the hell, and, and you might remember, it was on the day that Pandemic Legion Horde was supposed to have invaded 1DQ that CCP made the changes to um, capitals and supers, that they added all that PI and other garbage to it. And that influenced the end of that war. I mean, like it or not, do what, say what you want to say, those decisions to flee and leave and pack up were made because they were unable to SRP. And so anyway, it all goes back to that, is that ships now are just so much more expensive. People just aren't willing to climb into them to go out and play. I, I also think that the way to solve capital and super capital proliferation was not make it harder to make them. Make more reason to use them. Yeah. Cause more fights. But, um, you know, it, it, it harms the little guy. 
like so goons for instance we could still print capitals like nobody's business but smaller alliances um Cipedes, i'm sure sigma had a, a few issues at one point probably yeah you know, trying to get caps probably not now because you're in the yeah. imperium and good god they're everywhere but um it just all these changes just harm the little guy they don't really harm the big guy absolutely yeah it's 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 at the point where it's it's like if you look at a new budding alliance for example not only do they have leadership issues and other uh, litany of other things forming their ideas their identity whatever it is but yeah like just the the affordability of doing things like you can't expect a new alliance to burn you know 30 dreadnoughts a couple faxes with a battleship fleet they're just not going to financially recover from such such a thing um and that that's that's a big thing is the srp for dreadnoughts these days if you want people to engage like i would love nothing more to drop dreads constantly but it, it starts to become a, a financial thing because 50 dreadnoughts and you're looking at six you know and a half billion per dreadnought or if you have faction dreads you're looking at quite an expense whether you win or lose is irrelevant but just that's now a consideration where it, it used to not be as heavy as it is now financially. So yeah, that's probably why we don't see a lot of people uh, wanting to engage caps. We see a lot of groups punched down with caps and obscenely expensive doctrines when they know they have an advantage, like a dis distinct advantage, but no one's just throwing caps like they used to just having fun, having dread brawls, whatever it's, it's, it's too expensive for alliances these days. Yeah. My also the addition sorry dave there's also the addition of the mechanics now that you know once you own structures in space that you can be uh war decked and people can hire mercenaries to go and shoot your structures now not only are you a small corporation or a small in a small alliance but you've now got to drum up enough interest in your guys to go out and defend these things because you've got capitals being built there I mean, you know, there's so much pressure. I, I, I don't think many people in large alliances like Horde and the Legion or Goonswarm really feel that pinch that, my goodness, is that structure going to be there tomorrow or the week thereafter? Um, this is something that, you know, the smaller guys are. And I think that's also all leading into why um, these changes that CCP make, they think that it's directed at the larger groups like us. And yes, it does scold us but it certainly doesn't burn us it burns every single one of those smaller corporations and smaller alliances out there who are trying to make a dime on on uh, um, uh, making uh, uh, super not supers but capital ships yeah i mean it, it also yeah you know, we got other issues in eve that make it harder for newer alliances a good example is you know with what um b2 were trying to do up in the north you know they were just trying to make a new block spice up eve a bit you know after legacy fell it's like there's us and pam fam that's entertaining wouldn't it um and you know then frat and horde decided hey let's go club the little guy there's no need to clobber the little guy you know um, um like the goons don't go hey look these guys are trying to make some of themselves we don't need more space but let's go beat the shit out of them um but you you, you know it, it just kind of adds to it um and then making it harder to get the things you need to survive it just makes the game go a bit stale because for the last god knows how long it's just been imperium against horde and a lot of people say well break up the coalitions but that's not the problem in my opinion the problem is people have to join these coalitions because if they don't they become collateral damage because if one side agrees to defend the little guy against the big guy you know it just screws them over yeah but getting being a small corporation or alliance and getting an alliance as big as Horde or Goonswarm or any of the large fraternity or whatever to come inside with you is 
going to be a real, real large act of diplomacy to try and get them to actually come out and support you. I mean, you know what it's like, even if it's just a matter of um, uh, defending like a Karma Fleet University um, thing, you know, you, you can only get so many people who are willing to come out. Yeah, I mean, Speedies, you could probably have quite a bit of input on this being, you know, a newer-ish alliance with um, the, the, that's a bit smaller. What what do you think are the, the struggles for the, the new guy? Well, I mean, in, t in two years, we were able to really, like, dr dr really push and drive our people to you know, be who we are now. I mean, we're forming over 200 man fleets, but like that wasn't always the case. But getting there was not only a diplomatic challenge, a financial challenge, uh, like an idea, really getting people behind something and saying, this is the identity we were looking for. Um, it, it's it's really difficult, especially with a lot of these newer alliances after the, the, the sea agreement ended. Um, if you just go out with like a 30 man fleet to go fight somebody, they think it's a fucking invasion and it's like, no, we're just here for content. And, uh, you know, like we got the, 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 the drone lands gobbling up things for renter lands and these alliances have no choice. They either bend the knee or they get murdered by, you know, the North. So uh, these small groups are constantly desperate right now for, for saviors, for, for people that'll help them do anything because they're stuck between a, a rock and a hard place. And, you know, like we were lucky for the time that we formed an alliance because the game was a little different then, you know, um, but now it's, I, I find it extremely difficult for the people living in the neutral states or the sea. There's just nothing, nothing much for them to look forward to. You got too many backdoor alignments with the north that are you know attacking smaller groups but not for content there, there's there's definitely a dishonesty happening there and we're, we're watching it real time um i am happy to see cringe coalition they're not the best pilots they're not the best strategists but i'm happy to see independent groups like that just play the game and no one's gonna you know take their take their cake yeah, it's one of those. I if if there's no need to. So I've got up on the stream the the salt map. Um, for those, I'll zoom out. So you got Panda Fam here who just decided, yeah, let's gobble everything up. Now we we as the Imperium are just like we have enough space. Our dudes are living. Yeah, you know, we've expanded a bit because we got more alliances. Um, you know, down into some of Legacy's old space, but. That's probably as far as we're going to go, because holding a lot of space is a pain in the ass. But, yeah, you've got um, Pam Fam and Co. just constantly pushing the boundary on this um, eastern side here, on the, as you said, the, the Southeast Agreement... Um, uh, neutral states, which they're, they're just little guys trying to get by, make some, of, you know, make some of themselves. Um, a, a good a good example is Red Menace Coalition. They're not, you know, what they once were. But in Cat, when Horde and Frat came knocking, Horde basically went, cut ties with them or we're going to steamroll you. How is that healthy for the game? You know, you can't nurture new groups without letting them live a bit. Um, you know, even of other groups over here, it, it's like uh, you have to basically make yourself an island and not talk to anyone to be able to, you know, exist. And I think this is CCP's end game. This is what they wanted. You know, just just going back to what Peters was saying earlier on, that you know it's really a struggle for the smaller groups and the smaller neutral groups and what have you, and how do they survive? And I think I think this is what CCP wanted. CCP has made it in such a way that when you start this game, the first thing you learn is that you need to join a strong coalition or alliance to succeed. 
And I think there's a lot of truth in that matter because it's true. I mean, if you want to succeed and get the best of everything EVE Online has to offer, the only way you're going to get that is through one of the larger coalition um, or alliances. I think that's um, I think that's something that CCP has sort of. It's like having the bastard child. It's it's what they it's what they created. It's the monster they've created. Yeah. Um, yeah. Somebody somebody yeah. asked Major when you say succeed, what's the first uh, thing that comes to your mind? Like how what is success in Eve? Well, I would say staying alive. It's a broad one, yeah. Success in Eve is a daily is a daily struggle. Success in Eve is every day when you log in. Eve does not have an end game. There is no end to Eve until they pull the plugs on the servers. So success is such a I don't really know how to answer success because it's a daily struggle. It's something that you do every day. If you stop doing one day, it will affect the next day, which will affect the next day, <clears throat> and, excuse me, and so on. So success for me is logging in tomorrow. That is success. Yeah, yeah your sure. choice is right there. I, I would say the, the important thing for any leadership, and I'm sure these guys can back you up, is this is a game. It's meant to be fun. It's stressful for people in like our position sometimes, but at the same time, it's it, it it's there to make fun for people. So when I go out and FC a 256-man fleet, the important thing, at the end of the day, the objective doesn't matter, the escort doesn't matter, your killboard doesn't matter, did your fleet members have fun? Now, when, when it comes down to your being attacked, for instance, when Dalv was attacked, the the objectives matter then because that is is what would stop your members from having fun, essentially, if you didn't have any space and you lost all your stuff. But the the long and short is is in my opinion, fun is the most important thing. If your members aren't having fun, what's the point of what you're doing? Well, that's a very ambiguous way of looking at it, but it is true. Yeah. I mean, that's a very leadership point of leadership type point of view. I mean, now, how how do you how do you see that perhaps from a line member's point of view? Yeah, I mean, I I think goons do it the right way, pretty much. We don't really do mandatory fleets or operations. You know, we 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 just kind of. Well, the entire Imperium is just kind of like, you do you. Just, yeah. um, you know, that we have of, basic requirements. That was one of the weirdest parts of understanding goons when I first joined them and first started with Goon Swarm, was understanding that goons aren't there to run your corp for you or tell you what to do. or And it's a very, very big misconception that people have that Goon Swarm is one of those role-playing type alliances where you come. Maybe it was to a small degree when Mitani was running it, but it was always a fun, a fun thing. Um, but yeah, I think um, uh, people, people just need to chill out and have fun and enjoy the game. Um, you know, if you're part of a corporation, be part of that corporation, absorb yourself into it. Uh, do everything that's available to you through that corporation. Um, Goon Swarm is a very chilled, relaxed. We are not told what to do, how to do it. We run our own corporations, which is really, really nice side of being in, in Goon Swarm. On the note of members having fun and you know, basic things that are expected of them, so in, in, in Goons, each corp has... Um, there's monthly statistics that judge the, the health of the alliance in, in each corp, depending on male caps and other stats. I'm intrigued, so Pedis, how do you guys like, do you guys check whether your corps are staying healthy and people are active and 
you, you know, make sure you you keep in the alliance hierarchy sort of thing. How do you guys? Well, we have like I'm I'm fortunate enough to be in the position where I'm you know have unlimited time so to speak you know um, and my command structure is also full of people that are very involved with the CEOs and the CEOs are very involved with the alliance uh, leadership because we are we we kind of operate differently we, everybody is part of a team in sigma and we all pitch in we all look at um, what we can do to not only better our pilots on an individual basis but the corporations as well and the hardest part in leadership is 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 really finding something for your guys to munch on right like some sort of activity and that's that's the thing is you know the the leadership is there the community is there you have an identity but it's it's using all that right now in the game is is a hit or miss there's the content is 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 not as fluid as it used to be so having your um like your your other fcs look for something for your people to do um to keep them active in the community you know and that and that's that can be difficult right now with how the game is going yeah i so um taking off my host hat putting on my core hat i can definitely agree finding stuff for your members to do at the moment very challenging um so back even during the the war and dow um so for those that weirdly don't know um i'm one of the people that run the we call it the military stuff but anything to do with pvp in a sense um yeah. so back when the war and dow was on for, for us as a corp, it was great because we could form fleets. We were regularly getting like 200 man fleets of support. Yeah, and there was content everywhere. But nowadays, for for a corp or a smaller group that's not like an alliance main fleet, my chair's creaking, sorry. Um, to go and find that fun is very difficult because you could go to low sec, but you get the low sec dudes with their amulets and their, you know, just obscenely expensive crap that's just going to screw you over you can go to the groups that are on the, the screen now yeah all well, the southeast agreement guys and then they see a goon or a member of the imperium it's like oh my god we're being invaded no you're not i'm just here to have some fun you know or you go up to pam fam space and um the super fleet dropped on your face yeah, i mean <laughs> i've solo roamed in Panfam space, they see my name, and suddenly there's capitals and all sorts of random crap being dropped on my frigate, which I'm not innocent of. You come to Delve, I will drop my super on you. But I don't drop a fleet of them. You know? Um, yes, the echo's coming from Major. He uses speakers. Um, so it, it's very difficult to get that... That content where back before the war in Delve, you know, you had Brave where you could go to G Tech M. G Tech no G E Tech, sorry. I was reading something else somewhere else. Um and just hang about eventually, give it about half hour. They'll rock up with a fleet, you know? Um or back when Horde lived in Fade, way, way back when. Yeah, you rock up up there and it was quite a interesting matchup but now it's just blob the hell out of everyone um even if you go to panfam space you go into horde space and suddenly nc turn up and slice turn up and everybody and their grandmother is just dropping on you um which as i said we're not innocent um in that but we, we i like to think we do a measured response unless yeah you're dumb enough to bring a full battleship comp into delve we're gonna hard count you that's a bit of a threat. But yeah, you know, the, 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 the fun for anything that's not a big fleet is kind of I think evaporated a bit. Um don't know if anyone disagrees with that, but I think it's making it a bit more difficult. Um Yeah, that's where the running to the ESS comes in, yeah. because if you're a small fleet and you hop in the ESS 
they warp into you, yeah, you're going to get a couple of kills. You're probably going to get killed, though. So. Yeah, yes, this is uh, just one of those things. Like It's getting harder and harder. Attract people, they attract people into places like Delve or any other place where there are large alliances turning or churning over huge amounts of it in the belts or in wherever and sometimes those ESS amounts are really, really high and you go in and there's just nobody to defend it and you walk away with a lot of cash. So it brings it brings the mock to the yard, if you know what I'm saying. It brings the boys to the yard. Um, but it's just up to, so I guess we do it anyway, to uh, go out and rip their faces off and do other bodily harm to them. In game. That's what we do. Um, yeah, I mean, that is just prompt to be on a, another thing. Another thing that's getting harder for any group, and uh, I don't know how you guys handle this, Sapedes, but is recruitment. Because, um, yeah, it, the, the player count needs gone down a bit, let's be honest. But, you know, everybody's in their groups already, and it's hard to get them. So, how, how do you guys handle recruitment? Like, I know. You're an alliance, so you don't necessarily yeah. handle it on that level, but yeah. I'm intrigued. I mean, so kind of one of my leadership principles is, you know, like I, I, I don't live in an ivory tower. I uh, have an open door. Anybody can come with me. Anybody can talk to me. Um, I always lead from the front. So if I got guys that, you know, we have to wake up 4 a.m. to do a crazy CNTZ timer, I will I will be there as well. And that's kind of something we we kind of push to all our, our leaders down the line is, is really try to lead from the front. And when we recruit, um, we, we try to find people that are really looking for a team environment. We don't want individuals because um, that's not how you survive in EVE. And we also need people that understand that when you live in NullSec, no one is exempt from PvP. You must PvP first, and then you can crab second. Um, or you just, you're not going to be able to protect your space. Um, you can't expect anybody to protect you 100% of the time and identify as, oh, I'm an industrialist. That doesn't work here, buddy. Um, it's kind of like the uh, the fun what is it starship troopers everybody fights everybody works that's that's like our motto um how so do you I'm, police say again how do you police it so uh, how we police that is we have a very um intricate way of of statistically looking at people's involvement on a pilot and their alt basis if they engage into PVP, how much a bounty they're collecting, like all that kind of statistics. We have a special software that breaks it down and we can look at corporations and pilots and, and the Alliance as a whole on how that, that activity kind of a broad eagle eyes view of how everybody's doing. And then we can break that down on a corporation level and, and see how many of those active pilots are engaged in fleet or killboard statistics and at the same time their their bounty statistics like how much they are grabbing and or mining we like we have access to all that information and so we can see that we're doing very uh well um and so when we recruit we're looking for people that don't want to join sigma uh, we're looking for people that are more um kind of like vouch we're, we're really hard on vouch and newer pilots, we really support them if they're a legitimate new pilot to getting them into a doctor and ship, getting them into a, a crabbing ship so they can make money, so they can enjoy PvP. And so it's it's a process. Yeah, I think that's an important thing with the the new bows is everybody needs to help them, quite frankly. Um because Eve is the steepest learning curve ever. I, I get Major can attest, I get very, very angry when somebody attacks Karma Fleet University or Ascendance Rising, which are Karma Fleet and Ascendance's new very cops, because they're just there to teach people the game. Whether they want to go to Goon Swarm after that or Horde, I mean, we've had people that have been in there, conversed with us, and then they've gone to Horde, or come on to Ascendance. 
Um, I think helping the new guys is probably the most important thing that any null set group can do. And it's not just us to do it. Horde have their high set group, and I do commend them for that. Um, and even when they come out to null set, you have to keep helping them because Eve is a game where if you don't, people will just stop playing. Um, like, I was brand new when I came to Ascendance, and, and you know, I, I had the help in the core that kept me going. Um, which is one of my motivating factors behind everything I do. Even in my fleets, anyone's welcome in any battle game, mostly any ship. Uh, it's because I'm leaning back again. I'm sorry. I need to sort those out. When I get talking, I get really comfortable when I lean back in my chair. So, um, yeah, it, it nurturing the new guy is the important thing, in my opinion. And then that new guy becomes... I mean, we've had people in our court that started out as the new guy, and they're now joining me, dropping dreads and stuff on, you know, yeah, it's random true. Watching people. people. Watching people come in... I mean, over the seven years odd that I've been doing this, watching these guys come in as absolute noobs, asking all the right questions, getting in all the right ships, following a good career path, solid. It's just amazing to watch how some of these guys are now flying supers and what have you, all the way from all they were doing in the beginning was sitting in a catalyst, trying to make enough money to buy a Noctis, running behind supers, uh, salvaging and and that's the only income they had because they had no skills for anything else so it's really really testament to watch these guys grow up and they're still in the corporation they're still part of the of the team it's just really i agree with you dave it's really nice to watch um so we're, we're running low on time but i do have one more question for Safidis uh, as an alliance executive how can we nur help nurture new alliances how could the game as a whole well, one of the things that I, I try to do within my scope is I, I don't like stepping on smaller alliances. The, for example, there's lots of groups within the sea that aren't very strong. Um, and it, it's really kind of like pace, pace how you aggress those groups, like get them involved in, to PvP, engage with them. But let let them know. Like, if you can reach out to them, and be like, "Dude, we're not we're not going to invade you. We're just here for fun, fair, enjoyable content." And you know, don't go blowing up new bros, sotios, or like if the, it's their only fort. You know, don't drop a two hundred man hell fleet in there and go blow up their shit. Like, you give give them some room, allow them to grow. Um, and I think I think that's a lot of these groups kind of what we experienced a while ago is that when you're a budding alliance and you start to really hit the stage in a way that people notice you immediately become a target and the bigger groups you know like when we were living in catch near providence when we were part of rc after dreadbomb collapsed um we were targeted by snuffed baltrum's group nc and and it were helping us and then it kind of like devolved in craziness and then fire was attacking us with snuffed and and nc ph like it just became so much and everybody wanted content out of us but we couldn't fight like a thousand people um so things changed right and so the one thing i i can ask of the community is like really stop murdering small alliances let them let them grow a little bit you know it's it's bad for the game yeah, i i completely agree i mean there's many alliances i was talking about um getting content for like for attack or there's many alliances in that southeast agreement that even ascendants we could go and just steamroll but why you know yeah. what's the need because we can <laughs> well yeah i mean yeah i don't you'll you just kill them and then we'll have the the two block paradox or three block exactly paradox yeah again. it's yeah, like it's i love doing stuff because i can and honestly, I find it enjoyable. But once I've done that, what's left? Oh no, bored. Okay. As you can well, again. Nothing. Exactly. Um, so we're, we're running low on time. Uh, somebody did ask um, what advice you'd give for leaders, major, uh, with members showing signs of uh, burnout. Major did answer and chat a bit. Things like leave of absence, cut them some slack. 
um, you know, let them, let them, I don't know, we get them to fill out a form and mark them as on leave. Everybody has a time when they need to take a break from the game, even me. And, um, you know, if people think that they're going to be away for a short period of time or a long period of time for that matter, you know, for us, we just give them a leave of absence and that takes them off the kick list. Um, you know, we, we give the guys all the time in the world to, to check whatever it is in real life that they need checking and then come back to the game and find that their shit is exactly where they left it. The stations are still there, the structures are still there, and, and the everything is running as smoothly as it was before when they left. So for us, that is what uh, what we do. Yeah, um, well, for instance, up until middle of last month, I personally was really busy with real life, and yeah, Major wasn't you know, breathing down my neck. Well, he was literally in Texas, but that's a different story. Um, <laughs> but um, you, you know, so just cut them some slack, or or if it's something that your corp is doing, we um, or your alliance is doing, maybe look at maybe it's time to change it up and um, do something different. You know, or go home for a bit and let them crap. Um. So we we are, as I said, running out of time. Um, any final comments, thoughts, Sapedes first? Yeah, I just I just wanted to reach out as since I'm here is uh thank everybody in the Imperium, thanks Sigma, uh for you know climbing our way in the last three years to where we are now, and I wouldn't be happier. Um, I think I have a fantastic group of people, and that really like to engage in this game with me and the way that we kind of identified ourselves as the entity we are. And it's, I'm having a blast. I love this game. And, and I hope that uh, it doesn't uh, continue to go negative, right? Like with the patches, but that's a whole nother story. But yeah, man, um, I just, I just really hope uh, CCP does as good with this NullSec patch. It'll be really interesting and fun. Yeah, see what happens. And I need more feet picks. I gotta have more feet picks. <laughs> you gotta join the Ascendance Discord then. Oh, nice. Yeah, hit us up anytime. We'll, we 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 deal with feet picks. It's uh, every, how we every time I get it, cousin, I'll send at least a hundred feet picks. Oof, any, any, anyway, major. <laughs> any final thoughts that don't have anything to do with feet picks? No, just feet picks, bro. That's it. Feet picks, feet picks, feet picks. No, I'm joking. Um, just for the rest of you guys, all of uh, Ascendants, I love you guys. Um, all of our directors, all of our sub our recruiters, our IA guys, everybody is a single gear in a large group of cogs that is making a really, really cool machine work. And um, I absolutely admire all of you guys, and I really, really appreciate all the hard work everybody puts in. Thank you from me. Peace out. Right, my final thing is... Um... Remember, guys, Brisk is missing. If you see him, he may be confused. Um, we would love him return soon. Then you don't have to deal with just me or me at all. Who knows? Um, so if you have any information he's last seen outside the Imperial Palace, contact INM Public Affairs at the First Imperial Palace. 1DQ1A Dell, Southwest Regions. And until next time... Bye-bye.